what's up guys i'm back with another video and today i'm going to be discussing something that you all have been waiting on tuning the snare drum i've been releasing these tuning videos over the last month and a half and every other comment i see is like when are you going to release the snare drum tuning video well here it is the wait is over it's happening right now so the snare drum i'm going to be using today is the pearl decade maple it's a 14 by five and a half snare maple shell, of course. Um, and it's more on the affordable side for most drummers. Uh, it ranges between 150 and 200, so it's not considered a high-end snare drum, but it's definitely capable of getting the tones that you want out of it. I purposely wanted to use a more affordable snare in this video, just so you all can hear um, you know, how it sounds and just know that if you know how to tune properly, and you have a snare that is in good condition, it doesn't necessarily have to be high end in order to get the tones that you're looking for. So in this video, I'm going to be tuning to three different tones. It's going to be a high range tone, a mid tone, and a low tone, deep snare tone. Uh, but I'm going to demonstrate that in the video and you all are going to hear everything. Now, before we get into the video, I'd like to ask you all to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, if you haven't checked out the Tom tuning video as well as the kick drum tuning video, be sure to check the links out in the description below. All right, guys, let's get to it. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this head. Uh, this is a factory head that came with the snare uh, pearl head, but it is also made by Remo, and I believe it's an amb actually an ambassador. Uh, but I'm going to remove this and uh, you know clean the debris off of the shell and all that. If you guys have seen my um, tuning video uh, of the toms and also the kick drum tuning video, this is the same process. Remove the head, clear all the debris off of the shell. Make sure there are no nicks in the shell as well and the bearing edge. Wipe the rim with this cloth, uh, get all the debris off of it, all of the dust and everything. I'm gonna take this bad head off. Set the rim to the side. Then we're gonna take the cloth and wipe around the bearing edge. Make sure I get all the debris off of the drum. Now I'm gonna flip the drum over and do the same exact thing to the resonant side. I'm gonna remove this head. I'm actually going to use this same resonant head, but I am going to remove it and clean the bottom of the drum. I'm also going to remove the snare wires as well, and you'll see how I do that. Now, as you can see, I'm loosening the screws where the snare wires are held tight. So I'm gonna take those little uh, plastic, whatever you call them, out. Just gonna hang that all to the side for now. And then I'm going to loosen the resonant head.
I guess you can call them strips, the plastic strips that are uh, holding the wires in place. Sometimes they have the plastic strips like this or they may have like the, the string um, kind that hold the, that hold the snares together. All right, so once I get the screws loose, I'm going to remove the rim and the head, and I'm also going to have to remove those snare wires. I tried not to at first, but I was forced to. Uh, you'll see what happens. Yep, I'm just gonna make things easier and go ahead and remove the snare wires all together. I want to sit the rim to the side. Then I'm gonna wipe the debris off of the resonant head. I think I might have forgot to do that to this uh, to this side on the, on the rim, but. We'll see if I do it in a second. All right, so I'm gonna clear the debris off of the, the rim. And now I'm gonna feel for any splinters just to make sure that the wood is still smooth on both sides. Okay, now I'm gonna flip the drum back over and I'm going to start by placing the resonant head back on. Now, if you can see, the snare throw off is on my left side when I turn the drum over on this batter side. And that's how I prefer it. I prefer the, the throw off switch to be on the outside instead of on the inside. So when I put the resonant head back on, I want that throw off switch to be inside on my right when I'm adjusting the resonant side. Putting the resonant head back on. And me, I like to line my logos up. I like to center them on the drums. So now I'm going to finger tighten each screw. And if you look at the rim, you can see where those spaces are. Um, and that's where the snare wire strips are going to go through in order to be um, tightened back down. Now when I'm using the drum key right now, I'm, I'm not necessarily, uh, I'm not tightening the drum. I'm, it's equivalent to me finger tightening, it's just a little bit faster though. So I'm stopping as soon as the screw connects with the 
the rim. Okay, now I'm gonna put the snare wires back on. Now when you do this, you wanna make sure that the snare wire is on the right side. So the side where the snare wires are touching the head, that's the side you wanna place them on. If you have them on the wrong side, um, it's going to elevate your snare wires off of the head and you don't want that because you want your snare wires to make contact with the head. Also, when you do this, you want to make sure that the snare wires are aligned properly in the center of the drum and that there's an equal amount of space on each side. Now, when I put the snare wires back on and feed the plastic strips back through the space, um, I'm going to start on the side opposite of my snare throw off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull both strips through, making sure that the wires on the snare drum stay aligned and in the center and even on both sides so I'm gonna hold the snare wires with my right hand push the strips through with my left hand all right then once this side is tightened now I'm gonna go to the side where my throw off switch is and normally I will leave the drum down uh, face down like it is now but I'm going to pick it up so that you all can see exactly what I'm doing on that side as well now when you do the side with the throw off switch, you want to make sure that the throw off switch is off. If you leave the throw off switch on during this process, then you'll find that later on as you begin to tune and adjust the tension of the snare wires, you may not get the result you're looking for. So same thing, I'm going to feed the strips through this side as well. Now, once again, I'm only holding my snare up like this so I can get it on video and you all can see exactly what I'm doing. But normally I would leave it face down just like I did the other side. Much easier to do it that way. But as you can see, I'm pulling the strips with one hand and holding the snare wires in place. And then I'm going to tighten these screws down on the side. And with those, you don't, you don't want to make them too tight because sometimes if you screw them too much that didn't sound right if you screw them too tight then they could strip so all right now i'm going to start tuning the uh resonant head and to start with i'm going to do one full turn and a half turn per look since this isn't a new drum head i'm not going to seat the head now as far as the the resonant head the tighter the resonant head the more the snare wires are going to vibrate um against the head so generally speaking I usually like the the resonant head on my snare to be pretty tight now when it comes to tuning snares I don't pitch tune each lug as I would toms um, I'm not looking for a specific note to resonate or ring out with the snare. It's more for fit. I just make sure that the resonant head is tight because I want the snare wires to vibrate as much as possible when I need them to. Now I'm going to flip the drum over. I'll put the batter head on. The batter head that I'm using is the Remo coated P77. I'm going to finger tighten these screws.
once again, I'm not putting any tension on the head with this drum key. I'm just tightening the screws down until they make contact with the rim. Now since the batter head is a brand new head, I'm going to crank the drum on the batter side and I'm going to seat the drum head. Now I'm going to seat the head. Now usually you don't want to do this while the snare is on the stand like I did. You'll see what happens. See how it kind of tilted. Uh, you want to do it on a on a more sturdy, um, flat surface like a stool, um, a table, a floor maybe. Um, Maybe not on the snare stand. All right, so now I've seated the head and I'm going to detune the snare, loosen these screws to finger tighten tension again. And once again, even with the batter side, I'm not pitch tuning each lug. Like I said, when I tune my snares, it's, I tune them more for feel, how they feel. I'm not necessarily looking for a note to sustain or ring out. Now we're gonna start tuning the batter head. But before we do, we wanna make sure that the throw off switch is engaged, that it's on. As you can see, I'm having a little bit of trouble turning the throw off switch on because it seems to be, uh, the tension seems to be very tight. So what you're going to do is, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to loosen the screw on the throw off switch. I'm going to loosen the tension until it's easier for me to turn the throw off switch on. So the purpose of the screw on the throw off switch is so that you can adjust how tight you want the snare wires against the resonant head on the bottom. The tighter you have the screw, the less the snare wires are going to vibrate against the head. The looser you have the screw, the more the snare wires are going to vibrate. And you'll hear that as I begin to play. Now I'm going to tune the batter head. And I'm going to start by tuning or turning each lug once, one full turn. And to start with, I'm going to go for a mid-ranged tone for my snare. Now you can hear as I'm tapping the drum that you don't hear the snares, it's because the screw, the throw off screw was tight. So now I'm gonna loosen it. Now you can hear that the snare wires are becoming more engaged.
starting to sound like a snare drum now. One more thing, when you're tuning, especially snares, and you have a snare set up next to your, your kit or on your kit, you may hear some tones coming from uh, your toms. So when I'm tuning my snare and I hear that, I may place a towel over the tom just like I did so that I can clearly hear the snare tone only. Sound good to me. Now let's see what it sounds like under a microphone. Now, me personally, I don't like a lot of ringing out of my snares. Um, this is the you hear you're hearing the raw tone right now with no dampening, nothing. It's just the raw snare, natural tone. But like I said, I don't like a lot of overtone or ringing. Uh, in some situations, it's necessary, but in most situations, for me, I don't prefer it. So what I'm going to do is. I'm going to add a mini drum dot to see if that gets rid of the ringing. So that was a mid-range tone type of snare. Now I'm going to crank it a little bit more uh, to give me more, a little bit more pop. Um, I want to make it more of a high-pitched tone. Now with lower budget snares, you want to be sure and be careful that you don't crank the drum too much uh, because some snares might have cheaper hardware and the lugs could pop or the screws could be stripped so you just want to be mindful and be careful of that.
And as you can see, all that I did was I just tightened the batter head. That's it. I didn't make any adjustments to the resin head. No adjustments to the snares. Just tighten the batter head. That's all. So you hear that I tightened the head and now I can hear like a little bit of ringing or overtone. So now I want to add an original drum dot to see if it gets rid of that overtone. Sounds good to me. So that was a high pitched snare, snare tone with a lot of pop. Um, so now I'm going to detune the snare and start from scratch. And now I'm gonna go for a deep snare tone. I'm going to start by finger tightening the screws. And as you can see, I'm only making adjustments to the batter head. Now for a deep snare tone, the batter head is going to be more on the looser side. Um, you don't want to put too much tension on it when going for a deep snare tone. And you can hear the snares sustaining uh, like way out. So what I'm going to do now is tighten that screw so that the snares vibrate less.
You're sounding good. I hope you all found this video to be helpful. As always, if you have any questions about snare drum tuning, be sure to comment below and I will answer all of your questions. Until next time, peace.